Welcome to the Ninja Tune podcast, and this week, music journalist Joe Muggs sits down with King Midas Sound and Christian Finesse to discuss their new album, Edition One. They tell us how they all got together to create the sound for this project, and as always, we get to hear some of the music that has influenced them over the years. After that, we check out some of the new music coming out on the Ninja Tune family of labels with tracks from Igloo Host, Yippa, Levantis, Marabou State, and Seven Davis Jr. Are you loving? Are you leaving? Let me know. If it's real, you better let those feelings show. Are you loving? Are you leaving? Let me know. If it's real, you better let those feelings Hello, you're listening to the Ninja Tune podcast. I'm your guest presenter, Joe Muggs, and uh, there are four people in the Ninja Tune studios here today. Uh, we'll let them introduce themselves. I'm the bug. Roger Robinson. Kitty Stormy. Christian Finesse. And the fourth name there, um, less usually listed in the same <laughs> list as the other three who uh, regularly perform together as King Midas Sound. Uh, we're here on the occasion of, well, you four making a record. Um, Kevin the Buck, how did this magic come about? Um, it actually predominantly came about through a conversation uh, Roger and I had had in a hotel after a show in Holland, I believe it was. We are looking for, for ways to to move forward with Kim Midas Sound, we'd felt it still had to be made even more apparent that there was very little synchronicity between us and club music, you know, and we, we felt that there was still a sort of albatross of hyperdub hanging over us, not in terms of a negative thing about hyperdub, because I actually, we all love hyperdub as a label, but more just in terms of the dubstep connotations of also... Um, continue to, 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 to get in the way of Hyperdub too. I know that Steve felt that that, that that was a perennial issue, you know. And I think we we were looking at new ways to work and I would, was personally getting frustrated with myself for taking four years to work on any given album. Um, and Roger and I had discussed in a hotel room, how can we, what do we want to do to, to shake things up for ourselves? and find a new way of working for ourselves. And we discussed this idea where, like, jazz musicians would work together in the 60s, you know, which some people seem to think collaborations aren't as valid as solo group entity records now, but actually we find them incredibly valid, you know, and we like the idea of of X and Y, X plus Y equals Z, you know, and, and not knowing what that Z is or will be in the end end formula. And I think that um, we came up, Roger came up with the idea of uh, doing a tape archive, a King Midas Sound tape archive. And it would be, the idea was super fast recording, mixing process that would be like a sketch pad of a chance encounter. You know, and that's what the initial idea was. We wanted to think about how we could kind of come together with someone and create an artifact, you know, and how, how you know, in, in 20, 25 years time that somebody might find this album and say, yo, do you have, a collector might find this album and say, do you have the album with King Midas Sound with Finesse? No, when did that happen? You know, it's like kind of creating excitement, even not in our time, you know. And um, Christian was on the top of the list of, we made a list of people in the hotel and Christian was on the top of it. And we said, okay, let's contact Christian first. And if he says yes, then we're not going to con- contact anybody else until, you know. So, um, yeah, and so... We were big fans of Christian um, because we played with him in 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 a festival in St. Petersburg, and um, and as Kevin was saying earlier, he had a similar dynamic range of things that we wanted to do. So it felt like a different but good fit, you know. So and he said yes. <laughs> Don't walk away 
told me about this uh, collaboration it sounded natural it wasn't like it was exciting but didn't go whoa what are they thinking um there's there's these you know various elements of lots of layering this kind of maybe influence of my bloody valentine type sonics but also electronics and bass i mean did it feel natural to you christian well absolutely um you know i'm always completely open to any kind of interesting collaboration and also working always open to work with people from a different field from different genre and uh, Kevin and I have talked for ages about the possible collaboration and it never it was never possible there was never enough time and this time it was just perfect everything was very easy very simple and very quick as well wasn't it I mean I think he, he asked me like about a year ago or something I started sending tracks, samples, you know, whatever, any kind of material. And soon after that I got the first mixes and I, I was happy with everything he did. And were you all in the studio at the same time at any point or was it really a kind of to and fro? I think because, you know, all of us living in different countries now, our process has become sort of streamlined, you know, where, you know, Christian sent to Kevin Kevin built stuff, sent it to me and Kiki. I did demos, sent it back to Kevin. Kevin would say yeah or nay on the demos. Then I flew across, went to the studio. So, I mean, it was done quickly because I think the whole process was kind of efficient, you know, but um, it didn't really kind of stop the kind of emotional elements coming through. So, so, yeah, so it was all at different times and sometimes together. Still stay together. Don't walk away. Look past the pain. See past the stormy weather. Look in my eyes. Look past the lies. And see my smiles still friendly. Forget the past. We'll make it last Because this love I'm in the middle talked about the emotional elements being important this kind of influence of lovers rock and and um uh body prince billy and things like this on on king midas sound um i mean kiki or roger when you were writing your vocals did you find a natural emotional tone to this in amongst the process kevin and i talk a lot about the kind of music that we like and emotion and changing and shifting emotions is such a big part of it uh when Kevin sent through the tracks like the tracks by themselves were super emotional you know so I was able to like be on a nice bed of emotion for want of a better word um, and but I'd have to try and okay how can I shift it a little bit with lyrically um, so yeah I mean from 
from um, what Kevin was saying is like this stuff he got from Christian was a perfect bed and by the time it came to me I was just like oh what the really what you know and so I, I was super excited about writing songs on it you know because from the time I got it I felt moved by it without lyrics you know it's just what could I add to kind of either amp it up or you know or enhance or, or even reject the mood that was there you know It's a textural album. Um, it's a textural album, even more than previous um, King Midas Sound records. Um, was that deliberate? Was that partly kind of that you were in? This, you were working with Christians, um, you know, or was there a, something else that drove you to maybe pull beats aside and, and let the textures just take over? You know, there's a really deep emotional undertow to the record. You know, as far as we were concerned. It sounds trivial to talk about the issues that we were facing and what was going on during the making of the record. You know, when you talk, I, I personally um, almost lost my partner at birth of our child and our child struggled to survive two major operations. Roger had a very similar experience with his child. And um, this record was made towards the tail end of the major trauma you know and for me there's a real sense of release with this record and this record was was made in 
record time for me. I think we broke, I broke all speed records considering I normally take four years to make an album. And as far as I'm concerned, I think there's a lot of subliminal emotional impact and, uh, uh, and manifestation in the making of this record that I have only understood after the record's been completed. Because when we came up with the original idea to make a record fast, it, it, I didn't question, I put myself on autopilot. And Christian's palette, for me, is, is so, uh, so linked to my own emotional needs through music. When he sent me this beautiful, incredible, entrancing, atmospheric soundscape, it was obvious to me what I had to do. I couldn't even tell you now what I, I put, how I put what I put on there. You know, I can't even remember as it was being done because it was done so automatically. It's just okay. This mood takes me here. I know this. The, I guess it's through experience now that I, I I know what I feel is necessary. If there's a hole, I'll know how to fill it in terms of of of. Uh, uh, the impact of a musical component and I think that um, this record was a very necessary release of energies that had built up through a lot of tension over a course of a year both professionally for me personally as with the bug record and very much personally you know and I, I think it Kiki also is a mother in the same year that we became fathers and statistically I have no idea what the chances of that actually having happened would be, but that seems miraculous to me. And in a way, this this record, a lot of things we've discussed between ourselves is there's been a, a sort of subconscious reflection to it that you look back and you're like, wow, why why is there so much such a, a sea of emotion within this record? You know, it was never talked about, it was never discussed. Roger didn't even pick up on it until we, we did. I, I noted to him, I was like, you know, there's a lot of C references on this record and Roger had said it that when I'd, I'd noted it he hadn't, hadn't even noticed but this was this was a joy of working fast having for me I'm generally not someone who does that you know and the beauty now is looking back on it and, and actually feeling that it, it, it provided a very necessary emotional outlet for for me personally and I feel for everyone concerned you know and I think Christian's music is always absolutely tied to to emotion uh, uh, and it's the core of what we do with with King Midas Sound really uh, Kiki when, when you were writing your parts writing lyrics um, do you kind of um, write from a personal point of view or do you plug into it because uh, you know with these various intense emotional experiences going on is there kind of a collective personality it almost seems like Kevin was suggesting that was when I was breastfeeding my baby like she was five months old something and when he Kevin sent me the track first time I, I couldn't literally listen any music around that time um, but and then I was expecting it's like oh King Midas okay maybe it's gonna be a bit like mellow bug sound I was like oh no but then I listened like wow it's beautiful so it was like timing was perfect for me and I was like okay maybe I can start to practicing singing because I was very out pregnant I was heavy burst and I have to go through all that so yeah um, but then he was busy for bug and then Roger did amazing vocal and Riddick was amazing and I listened wow okay I don't know anything I can do it but I try and then naturally it all came out and yeah it was just Natural, natural happens, yeah. I start to swing I've tried to just forget it The times we dance together 
And Christian, I mean, you know, Kevin says you, you know, make emotional sounds. You say it's all you could do. Um, when you approach a project, I mean, you know, some of your records can go from, say, say, with Ruchi Sakamoto, the most gentle, caressing, kind of comforting sounds, through to really explosive and 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 harsh you know, layers of exploding guitars sometimes. I mean, how do you decide when you start a project like this? How did you decide with this project what the sounds were going were gonna to be? Well, I guess I'm interested in both sides. I'm, I'm interested in almost you know, very mel- melancholic, almost kitsch-like stuff. You know, I, I guess I'm probably somewhere in between cheese and taste sometimes. But uh, at the same time, I, I really like noise music. And... Um, to bring these two parts together that's always what's, what's interesting me and when I, when I worked for King Midas um, I don't know, I just I thought they were expecting some kind of guitar drones from me and I was trying my best to provide that and it was very it was very intense for me also to record this stuff I hope it worked, I think it, somehow it did <laughs> Make how you stay strong Cause we both belong To our love Never treat you Strike all schools when we young and old be our love. Our love. Our love. Our love. Oh, 
Um, let's let's talk about some of the uh, influences that you guys have, have chosen because um, I think it might shed some interesting light on some of these processes. Um, I mean, you know, Christian, you mentioned your guitar and the uh, inspiration you chose is is Deep Purple. Well, I, actually, I, cho- I was choosing three tracks. <laughs> one was a Brian Eno track. The other one was um, like Neil it. Young and... Deep Purple. Tell, tell us about Deep Purple and, and how it still reverberates. Okay, well, they've been asking me to uh, choose three tracks from my childhood, that tracks that were really influencing me, that, that actually would make me uh, doing music. And I had this friend when I was a kid, and he, he was a record collector, and, 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 you know, he had everything. And he was the first person who introduced me to this kind of music, and, well, you know, Obviously, that was um, the early 70s or something, and there was Deep Purple, you know, and there was Brian Eno and Roxy Music, and so that was the first stuff I actually heard, the first pop rock music I heard, and that was influencing me, of course. But uh, did you, because, you know, your music is so textural and you've obviously gone way beyond rock, did you hear the music in those terms when you were listening to distorted guitars and hearing it for the first time? Oh, yeah, um... I really love the energy of that track, you know, it's, uh, I think the rhythm is great, the energy is top, it's, yeah, well, I, I, I was just being honest, <laughs> I liked it. But, but I mean, what, what I guess I'm saying is, um, as well as hearing energy and rock and roll and all that kind of thing, did you hear it in these kind of abstract terms? It was your brain already kind of creating these, these abstractions from it that you make? Yes, actually yes. Um, I don't know if you know, but once I made a remix of uh, a Rolling Stones track, uh, Painted Black, and and a Beach Boys track uh, as well from, from the Pet Sounds album, and number three on my list was actually this Deep Purple track, so maybe one day I'll do it.
the small things I mustn't think about, like how she bite my lips when we kiss, or how she roll her tongue along my gums. No, no, them small things not helping no one, because if it ends, it mean it wasn't right, right? Frantically trying to save it at the last moment, as it pick up speed downhill. Nothing left to do but watch it slide, slide, slide away. Back to the beginning, with no one belonging to nothing. Start again, go to shows with friends, bass, bears and weed fog. Eat sushi dinner with a stranger fighting for conversation. Watch all the movies you miss in a three-day binge, eating only cornflakes and coffee. Shake it out. Join the gym. Push it. Push it. Look at your aging eyes in the mirror. Grow your beard like a forest. Throw in every book you don't love. Order your groceries online. Don't think about them small things. It don't help no one. Get out of the house, the new her could be the next woman you meet, searching for you. Roger, you chose one of my, my top ten favourite albums ever, um, Hissing of Summer Lawns. <laughs> and I can hear a bit of how Joni uh, reverberates through what you do, but perhaps you could spell it out a bit. I think when I was young, um, very much... I was just into story songs. That's the only things that really resonated with me. And I'm telling you from cheesy story songs through to brilliant story songs. People like Dolly Parton, you know, uh, it's just it's just like, wow, this, and the story of it was the thing, not just the melody. And I think um, Joni Mitchell, um, a particular track called um, Edith and the Kingpin, which insane story you know and just the way she fleshed it out even before i was really even into poetry i think i was into the poetry of Joni mitchell and um and and i think a lot of it was that it being like a 10 year old boy in trinidad a bit chubby and not many friends you know i i would find <laughs> no no, no it, it, it's the truth it's the truth <laughs> Okay, a okay, ten-year-old boy in Trinidad who was really popular, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like, it was really chubby. I I found the commonalities with watch in stories. I find the commonalities between things, and I think um, I think even to this day in my writing, I'm trying to find a commonality between me and the listener. You know what I'm saying? And that's where the kind of story songs kind of come in. You know? Also, I mean, the, the, that record was maybe the peak of uh, Joni's. A uh, huge ambition in production and arrangement, and the the stories coming together with that, without kind of losing that core of personality in the middle. I think one of the things about Joni Mitchell is that people don't realize how much jazz she used to listen to, and how her melodies, you know, they they they're super varied. You know, it's not you can't just find like it's not like a sample where you just she has one melody that she rules with all the way through. It goes all over the place. But how she could find a string between it was always super impressive for me. And and a guitar playing was amazing, you know, and it, and a specific type of guitar playing that had to do with providing a bed for the song. So it wasn't about shredding. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's so everything worked as parts of a poem her guitar playing her singing her melodies everything worked to kind of create this this entire whole you know and, and that's something i'm trying to kind of carry with me still i never got the guitar playing down though but <laughs> but everything else i'm trying to get down <laughs> the big man arrives disco dancers greet him plain clothes cops greet him small town Big man, he's not listening. 
Let's um, try something quite contrasting, Kevin. <laughs> um, yeah, this doesn't sound much like Joni, your discharge track. Actually, you know, my choice is extremely related to Christian's choice. <laughs> because I felt at a very young age, I was being tortured by my mother on a regular basis in our household because she had speakers in every room that she would insist on blasting heavy rock music. So Deep Purple were actually my nemesis. Richie Blackmore, I had actually wished dead on many occasions when I was a child. A child, a child. That's why I loved it when I saw uh, Christian's Joyce. Yo, the fact that your mother had speakers in every room says a lot. <laughs> I just realized something very essential about yeah, your mother. Yeah, yeah, it's actually true. I've never thought about that, but it's actually very true. But um, at that age, um, shit made even less sense to me than it does now uh, and it was a very turbulent time as it is for most people like beginning of teens and um, hearing heavy rock as the soundtrack to my parents beating each other up on a regular basis or my dad beating me up was not the one you know <laughs> as far as I was concerned so therefore I was drawn to stuff like crass throbbing gristle discharge because it seemed to be a direct uh, um, questioning of all forms of structure all forms of control and, and, and reflective of how out of control the world seemed to me at that age um, and discharge for me I could hear how someone like Sonic Youth who were applauded as being these like masters of their instrument and masters of technique sound to me like they actually lifted a lot from Discharge, to be honest. I don't know if it's true or not. Um, and Discharge, I found out actually through Justin, of all people, I'm trying very hard to, 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 to make it sound cool that I chose a, a, a punk track, <laughs> fundamentally. But basically Justin told me that, that Discharge were actually obsessives in the studio and that their, their multi-tracking of guitar is meant to be legendary, you know, in, in terms of how they created this wall and wash of, of riff, you know. And Discharge got rid of all the shit I found repulsive about heavy rock. There was no guitar solos. There was no spinal tap vocals. There was no... Um, there was no theatre. It was just direct confrontation and direct uh, questioning politically of 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 the world at large you know and punk even before because discharge was the first thing i ever bought as well that which was a very crucial thing for me i i bought a discharge seven inch mail order and it was the first money i'd ever used first time i'd used pocket money to buy a record so therefore it, it, nostalgically i'm a complete i still am a complete vinyl addict and I still love record store browsing. So for me, it, there's many reasons why I chose the Discharge record. It's certainly not inspirational, obviously, on, on, on uh, King Midas Sands' palette, but in a way, when I hear our new record that we've all worked on, it's actually anti-structural. You know, it, it, it doesn't conform to conventional song structures. And actually, for me, if it hadn't been for punk music, and in particular post-punk music after that, I think I certainly wouldn't, obviously certainly wouldn't be in the position I am today, you know. For me, when I, I listened to um, Public Image's Metal Box record, or if I listened to... Um, some early birthday party record, uh, productions, what was fascinating was that they seemed to tear up the rule book. And, you, and there was a sense of chaos and a sense of, you not, not, even now I wouldn't know how to describe those records to somebody, you know. And that's really what I hold dear in music, you know, that, that, that sense of originality, individuality, freshness and timelessness. And these are all things 
we certainly aspire to, but you never know if you're going to really achieve, you know, they're very lofty things to aspire towards. But like Roger alluded to earlier, you hope that in X amount of years time, somebody is going to have found a special place in their heart for a record you make. And specifically this record that we've made together, because for us, it's so emotionally charged that you hope it will have a resonance, you know, and Discharge had resonance emotionally to me. I don't like generally music that's done for formulaic purposes or done as a functional tool. I like music that's always meant most to me is, is intrinsically linked with emotion, you know, and yeah, there you go. It doesn't take much to hear that kind of punk challenging aspect kind of running through all of the history of things you've done um, but it is interesting to hear you say that actually the, there was sonically a direct early influence and, and that there was a, you, you sort of kind of sense the experimentation in those records because there was you know everyone it's very cool to kind of mention the post-punk bands and, and the fall and public image and, and, and so on um, but some of those more kind of crusty <laughs> love the punk bands um, people um, don't appreciate even how experimental crafts were or you know bands like rudimentary peony and stuff you know they were they were way out there Kiki's choice kind of uh, closes the circle neatly because it actually, it being one of Kevin's records that definitely shows a bit of punk attitude in it. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, I chose this track because that's I actually start really singing. It was 2006 or five, and then before singing I was graphic designer designing skateboard design or t-shirts and all that but then I had like um, yeah really deep depression I divorced with my husband and lost house and no money in London have to survive but didn't want to do same graphic um, job and I just wanted to do completely different things because that's gonna kills all my depression so okay maybe I can sing um, like a warrior queen and I listened to the track I was like what was this it's like a dance hall but this crazy like industrial buck, boom 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 and I was like wow okay maybe I can do something like that so I made a kind of similar track like that singing in Japanese kind of accent English but uh, yeah I made a track called Gobritikuk and I just so much influence from that music and then I just started doing music properly and then and ended up working with Kevin so as the most significant song for me I think for the one of my yeah mm. That's funny because you actually describe a slightly similar situation to Kevin with his, his teenage punk record, you know, it helped break you out of a situation. When you have the depression, you need, your brain needs a shock element to go a different direction, that's I, that's I believe. So, yeah, doing something shocking things like I never sang in front of people, 
and doing music. So it was just totally, totally, um, yeah, big influence for, yeah. <laughs> Three of you chose music that is quite energetic and rocking. I mean, you know, is is there this kind of undercurrent in amongst these these textures and oceanic feelings of the record? Is there still some of the the kind of heavier, older King Midas sound in there? How are the personalities, you know, the, and the very long and rich musical histories that you've all got kind of fall together into something coherent? In King Midas sound, we're kind of friends. You know what I'm saying? So I think the kind of cohesion is that we're all, we're all friends, you know, and, and we pass work back and forth together. And, and that kind of creates an emotional fit, you know. And, and also we have a kind of language through passing things back and forth. And so we speak the same language, you know, and, and that's how it is. You know, if when he talks about influences, I know. When I talk about influences, I know. If there's something I don't know, he'll send it to me. He'll say, check this out, you know. And then you have that kind of like underst- that understood that language, you know, so... So I think that's the kind of connection. In a way, the connection is no connection because actually, as far as I'm concerned, everything about making music has been about a a reflection of my personal growth, like psychologically and emotionally. And I think that the record we made now, I like the fact it has nothing to do with Discharge. (laughs) <laughs> actually you know I mean of course it does in lieu of what the things we've discussed and trying to trying to rationalize if there is a connection but actually my site's always forward you know I personally uh, don't want to to regurgitate the past you know and it's very very essential for me now and we've discussed this earlier because we're all parents and I know you are Joe too that you maximize your time in the studio because your time is divided even more significantly now than it would ever be. You know, so I, I know I work better now having a concept firmly in place before a record's even begun because I know for years I didn't have that. Like for many years with Techno Animal, we were just experimenting. We knew roughly after time what we were after, but it took us quite a few records, for instance, to decide what it was we really wanted. Whereas this time, and around this time, and for the last few years for me, I I have a very uh, obvious goal. And for sure, I'm actually quite happy if that goal isn't achieved. And and if you suddenly are totally knocked off course, you know, and and suddenly find yourself in a totally different direction by by whatever input comes in. But I think um, when you work with the collaborator who's a master of his instrument, as I feel Christian is, you know, I think that um, you react in tandem to that. And when Christian sent us the material, um, for me, it was just an amazingly beautiful palette of sounds that had a deep, deep 
melancholic strain underneath it, um, which was ideal because that's me <laughs> as well, you know. I think in many ways, you know, and I, I think that um, personally coming off of a Bug album and again seeing how difficult it really is to rid yourself of a caricatured um, um, identification in this industry. You know, like seeing the reviews, particularly from America actually, of the Bug album and how I'm Mr. Angry, basically. I'm Mr. Angry, noisy bass man. You know, yeah, I am. Partly, <laughs> you know, but actually a large part of me isn't that. And, and certainly the changes that went on personally whilst making this record are much, like emotionally, are much more significant than a record by Discharge. You know, for instance, as far as I'm concerned, you know. Um, so I just think that what this record has, as far as I, I, I feel, is it has its whole singular own sound world I would find it very difficult to describe this record to anyone you know easily um, and what it is is it's a sound world made up of this combination of four four different energies from very different backgrounds culturally socially uh, and experience wise Christian was that actually tough to come into I mean you you knew these guys from presumably from festivals and so on where you play together you you knew their music but as Roger says it's kind of a family there's a whole lot of um, you know close shared influences Did, what were, were you were you self-conscious about kind of putting something into the middle of that it was not difficult at all I must say I mean I don't know I felt very welcome and um, all the feedback I got once I, I was sending stuff was so great so I kept on doing the stuff that I did before, you know. No, it was very natural, very easy, very nice. That's all I can say. <laughs> Excellent. Um, can we? How much can you talk about the other collaborations that are planned? I mean, this is to be a series. With the collaborations, with the additions, we don't want to talk about it publicly at all. You know, for a start, we want to hear them done and know that they'll do justice to this record we've made with Christian. Because for now, for me. Well, we haven't even discussed this. <laughs> uh, Christian, the, 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 this, this combination has set a bar very high, you know, and we have to see how the others turn out. And also, there's always so much teasing and hype everywhere now. I feel a slight allergy towards that. With, and and we, with the album we made, we originally um, wanted to throw it out super quick, you know, like probably digital only we talked about tape and digital tape for this crazy throwback to the past and digital because it's so contemporary but actually um, it was only through feedback from Ninja Tune directly that made us re reassess how we were going to do this because I'd come off the back of a seriously stretched bug campaign which I'd never been part of a campaign like that. Maybe it's normal in, in larger industry areas. It's also to do with how everything's changing now with digital media, you know. And just knowing that I personally didn't feel comfortable with this record being marketed in, in a way like that, or even the idea of marketing such direct, pure emotion that I feel is in this record and contained within the one record, you know. I think um, we wanted it out automatically that hasn't happened for many reasons um, and I feel that the, co the, the other collaborations that are going to successively follow it's going to be a case by case scenario that's the beauty of dealing with different people and we'll see at the time but I certainly don't want to tease it or have people have to wait as well that's the other thing that pisses me off as, 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 a, as a consumer with all this teasing, I, sometimes I just get pissed off waiting around. I just want to hear this shit, you know, really. Uh, and um, it's not worth mentioning names right now because the record's not done. None of the records are done. This one is done and this one we're, we're fiercely proud of, really, you know. And it, it was a huge surprise how it ended up in terms of... We 
Like you say, we knew that Christian was a soul brother in terms of, of his, his combination of beauty and, and melancholy. Uh, but we obviously had no idea. I, I wasn't able to tell you what I was going to add to what Christian did or how I would keep what was left in or erase him to the point of invisibility on one track in particular. <laughs> uh, it's just, it, it's, it's a very organic, natural, human record. And to relegate it to digital sound bites is something that I didn't feel comfortable about in terms of promotion or, or in terms of how we want to continue with the additions. Are you going to play it live together? Yes, as far as I know, we have, <laughs> we have two or three shows already confirmed. So. Christian and Kiki are the ones sending the emails saying, yeah, what are we going to do? <laughs> and me and Roger are like, oh, don't, don't worry about it, man. No, it's no. Good. It'll, be, it'll be okay. It'll be, it'll be okay. <laughs> but no, we're really looking forward to it. The first show was just announced today, the Incubate Festival. It's going to be our first collaborative endeavour. But I think when I first saw Christian perform live, I could understand how some people who were used to listening to his records in comfortable home environments, for instance, might get a deep shock from how visceral his, his live shows are and how loud. You know, in exactly the same manner, we know that we pissed off a lot of people who were expecting waiting for you in a live context and they were faced with a, like a whisper to apocalypse from our live shows, really. And I think that when you see Christian live, you understand just how incredibly good he is at translating a kaleidoscopic vocabulary of sound and emotion. And it just matches us so well in how we work. It seems like a, a crazy that we didn't even talk about it before, weirdly enough, you know? So it's, it really is a, a perfect match as far as we're concerned for the, for the live show I think that's a, a lovely note to end it on um, it is a very natural collaboration so um, look forward to seeing it on the stage and thank you all very much for your time and uh, you've been listening to the Ninja Tune podcast Our thanks to King Mida Sound and Christian Fernez, and of course our guest host Joe Mux. We now turn our attention to some of the new music coming out on the Ninja Tune family of labels, starting with Igloo Host and a track called Gold Coat, which is coming out on Brain Feeder.
was Igloo Host and a track called Gold Coat. Up next, it's Yippa with his track Neighbourhood, which has been remixed by The Rain. Range remix of Neighbourhood by Yippa coming out on counter. Next, it's Technicolor artist Levantis with Jamaican Greek style. Levantis and a track called Jamaican Greek Style, which is coming out on Technicolor. Now it's Wallflower by Marabou State with Rosser and Friends on Remix Duties. <laughs> Remix of Warflower by Marabou State, which is out on counter. Finally, it's Seven Davis Jr. and Sunday Morning from his album Universes, and this is the Katronic Rough Cut mix coming out on YouTube. You never had a love like this before, 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 you never had a love like this you never had a love like this before. 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 Look at baby, here I 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 That was 
K Tronic remixing Sunday Morning by Seven Davis Jr. And that's it for the Ninja Tune podcast. We'll be back once again with another edition soon. Attention.